Okay, very common exam type questions are that related to producer and consumer surplus. These are actually very easy questions and you need to make sure you can get full marks on them. They tend to be worth four marks and normally you have to illustrate them on a diagram. Okay, so a common question might be what happens to consumer surplus when the price increases? How would you actually answer that question? Well, you need to show it on a diagram. So you'd have price and quantity. And because we're working with consumer surplus, you would just draw a demand curve. Now, you don't need to draw a supply curve. You're working with consumer surplus, you know the demand curve on its own will be enough to tell you the differences in consumer surplus. Okay? It's also worth making sure that your demand curve touches the y-axis to give yourself an area to work with. But you don't need a supply curve. Okay? Amazingly, doing this on its own will get you the first mark. Price and quantity labelled and then a demand curve label. Then pick a price, okay? somewhere in the middle of the curve, P1, Q1. All you're trying to do is say, well, when the price goes up, what happens to consumer surplus? So, at this stage, I would say, label your initial consumer surplus. So you know consumer surplus is very similar. The difference between the prices consumers are willing and able to pay and what they actually pay for a good or service, right? So, the initial consumer surplus, I would say it's worth writing this down on the side. So, initial consumer surplus is triangle A, B, P1. Why not write that down on the side, or if you've got space down below, write it down below. The initial consumer surplus at price P1. Okay? And then, as the price rises, so now you'd have to show a price rise to P2. Right? So, the price goes up to P2, quantity falls to Q2, right? What happens to, produce, to consumer surplus now? Well, now you say new consumer surplus as the price increases is ACP2. And finally, down below, you have to say that ACP2 is less than ABP1, so consumer surplus has fallen. Don't use terminology, don't write it like that. Use proper words and things. Okay, but that's very simply how you do it. So where do the marks go? Well, one mark for doing the labelling, price, quantity, and the demand curve. One mark for showing the initial consumer surplus. One mark for showing the new consumer surplus. And then a final mark for saying whether it's increased or decreased. That's how the marks go. It's as simple as that. I would always recommend labelling your triangles. Just put letters on A, B, C, D, E, F, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. But just make sure you label it and make reference to it down below so you get your four marks. Okay? Don't just do new prices and assume the examiner knows what you're doing. You must go in baby steps and show exactly that you know what's going on, okay? So that's a consumer surplus one. If there was a price reduction, you'd do exactly the same thing but going the opposite way and consumer surplus would increase in that case. Right, what about producer surplus? Okay, what about producer surplus? Right, so let's say the question is, illustrate on the diagram what happens when the price rises, what happens to consumer surplus, right? So that's have a look. I hope I said producer, not consumer surplus. I can't remember what I just said there. Okay, but now we're working with producer surplus. So supply is the only curve we need. Again, make it touch the y-axis. Supply, that's it. That's one mark. We don't need to draw a demand curve. Pick a price. Call that P1 and Q1. And at this stage, shade in or just represent the initial producer surplus, and I'll write that down. So initial producer surplus is ABP1. Okay, now you're trying to say, as the price increases, what happens to producer surplus? Well, show the price increases, let's say now, to P2. Okay. The price goes up to P2. The new consumer surplus is the area above the supply curve, but below the price. Okay, so new producer surplus is just going to be ACP2. Okay, three marks so far, you've done the initial producer surplus, you've done the new one now, you've labelled your curve and your axis, and then you've got to make a final comment saying, look, the new producer surplus, okay, which is ACP2, is greater than ABP1. Okay, so producer surplus has increased. Okay, that's all you need to say. As long as you make reference to that down below, just write it in words properly, make sure your diagram looks good, and it's all labelled correctly, all the triangles are labelled, you'll get your four marks. Okay? I've never seen so far 
they're asking you to show producer and consumer service on one diagram. But if they did, you just do demand and supply uh, diagram and you just show the relative areas of consumer producer service. Okay, don't mess these questions up, they're so easy. Make sure you get four marks on them. See you next time, thank you very much.